Apologies for yawning so much. I did get enough sleep, I think, but... Oh my. Welcome, Lady Belieb. So this is the Queen of Karain. What is wrong with you, barbed head? Show some respect. Huh? Oh, um, sh should I bow or prostrate myself? No. It is quite all right. Stay as you are. Mother. Your eminence, I would like to give thanks to you. You honor both me and my husband. His exemplary service deserves to be honored. Oh, but what a terribly trying time this must be for you, Lady Belieb. May my prayer comfort your soul and that of your dearly departed husband. Nothing would please me more. Oh, your eminence. Your words are wasted on my humble husband and I. Now that's what I call a commanding presence. So, you are the lawyer of whom my daughter speaks. Yes, your eminence. I am so very honored to make your noble acquaintanceship. He's trying to use that Keigo and failing. Doesn't he speak Japanese? My goodness. I I'm humbled to bask in your... Resplendence? Ack. Did I overdo it? I have no idea how to talk to a queen. <laughs> May the Holy Mother's blessing be upon you. Now then, Lady Belieb, let us go to the chamber of prayer. Rafa, you are to accompany us too. Yes, Mother. Wow, the queen is seriously something else, and a murderer. <laughs> The Prayer of Lament, huh? Don't see how that'll do any good. It's... Justice Minister Inga. Hmm. Who are you, buddy? Nice to see you again, Minister Inga. Again? Have we met? I have prosopagnosia. I'm Phoenix Wright. We met in the accused lobby the other day. All oh, right. Blue suit, jagged hair. You're that lawyer who brought my daughter down a peg or two. Your daughter? Yeah, Rafa. He's Princess Rafa's father? So he's Queen Garan's husband. You planning on sticking your fat nose in this mess, too? The accused is a good friend of mine. Like I said the last time. You better watch yourself, see? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? You want to question me? That would be great. <laughs> you got balls for a lawyer. Guess I can play along a bit. But I got things to do, see? So I'll have to talk while I work. Take that. Where do you get off sticking that thing in my face? You forget who you're dealing with? Don't poke your nose where it don't belong. Or do you want a spot on my execution list? <laughs> no, I'm good. Better end this conversation now before I really rub him the wrong way. <laughs> I grin smugly and smoke cigars for a living. <laughs> I wanted to let you know that I'll be the defense lawyer on this case. A and wears capes. Uh, actually, not not quite a cape. It's only on off of one shoulder. It, it, it's not a cigar, it's his, it's his stamp, his signature stamp. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. You only won last time because that idiotic prosecutor filed false charges. <laughs> but it's gonna be different this time. I got Corrine's top prosecutor on this one, see? Oops. I don't care who I go up against. I'm going to prove my client innocent. 
You haven't forgotten the little thing called the Defense Culpability Act, have you? Blow this one and you'll suffer the same fate as the accused. How could I forget? <laughs> you lawyers are all the same. You strut your stuff till the DC Act comes down hard. Then you start begging and pleading for your lives. It's really hard to watch, I tell you. Well, I don't plan on letting it come to that. Were you the one who wrote the Defense Culpability Act? Heh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. What's it to you? Either way, as Justice Minister, I'm gonna enforce the thing. Dots! It started as a way to counter the dirty tricks of your trade, like falsified evidence. But it turned out to be quite handy. Efficient, even. Handy? Efficient? Yeah, it made my job real easy. Any goons who cross me or the Garan administration are gonna get just what they deserve, especially those rebel scum. I wonder if we're going to have to defend one of the rebels for the final case. That might be interesting. You can get away with that here? You better watch your mouth, lawyer. I enforce the law in Karain, see? And being that I'm the queen's husband, that makes me king. Um, no, I'm pretty sure the queen is the boss around here. <laughs> Go on, say what you're thinking so I can charge you with Lay's Majesty. Irk! I can't let myself... I can't get myself arrested now. Listen up, lawyer. We got a low crime rate and a populace that thrives in peace... Li lives in peace. And that's all thanks to the DC Acts. Though I don't want to hear any more lip about it. But I can't defend my client unless I can speak my mind. Heh! <laughs> Even without the DC Act, Dirk and his insurgent scum buddies' days are numbered. What's that supposed to mean? Let's just say, I got a little trick up my sleeve, so I'd watch it if I were you. Cause you got a defiant attitude, like one of them dragon dupes. Say, wait, you know what these are? N no, what? Orders of execution. They really pile up if I start slacking off. What? And tomorrow I'll have even more work to do, processing the one for your little friend. And if you really do defend her, I'll have to add one more to the pile for you. But you're not stupid enough to waste your life on that criminal, are ya? Hmm. Don't worry, I'll make sure to lighten your workload, Inga. I won't give you a single execution order to sign tomorrow, except for the one for the real murderer. I have returned, Barbed Head. Your benevolence, are you done with the rite? <clears throat> yes, it was performed flawlessly. Lady Belieb stayed behind to speak with Mother. I hope this will help ease her sorrow, even if just a little. So, you have been speaking with my father? Yes, you could say that. My father is a great man. He works tirelessly to keep the peace in our kingdom. Crying as it stands today owes everything to the efforts of my mother and my father. You should feel deeply honored. Under normal circumstances, they would, ne they would have never spoken so readily with a lawyer. Yes, of course. It seems Rafa doesn't know what her father is really like. Well, now that we're done here, let's go see if I can talk to Maya now. Oh, it's you, Nick. Maya, are you okay? The questioning wasn't too harsh, was it? No, I'm alright. How about you? You make any progress? Well, I haven't found any conclusive evidence that could prove your innocence, but I have a small lead. Really? But for right now, I'd like to ask you about the High Priest. Sure, ask away. By the way, what's the princess doing with you still, Nick? Doesn't she have anything better to do? Doesn't seem like it. I heard that! How rude! Of course, I have many other things I could be doing. Just blurting it right out. Let me just get it right out in the open. 
It's just a thought, but do you think the high priest could have been a rebel? A rebel? Why would you even think that? Because if he was, then the rebel hunter Lady Kira would have had a motive to kill him. Wh wh what? Uh oh. Princess Rafa overheard me by standing next to me while I spoke at a normal volume. What idiocy is this? Abbot in me? A rebel? It is beyond the pale. My mother has offered the prayer of lament to his soul. That is the sort of person he was. All right, all right. I was just raising the possibility. I will not listen to such, such tomfoolery. She stormed out. Oh well, nothing we can do about that. Do you recall the high priest doing anything suspicious? Hmm, come to think of it, he seemed unusually restless during the rite. He kept glancing up at the sky, though I have no idea why. He was restless and kept looking up at the sky. Hmm. That doesn't really tell us much, does it? Anything else come to mind? Sorry, that's about it. Guess this is all I'm going to learn about the High Priest right now. Oh, but there is one thing I should follow up on. <clears throat> I want to keep my spirit channeling ability secret while I'm here, Nick. What? Why? I'll, I'll explain later. Yes, do tell. With Princess Rafa gone, this might be my only chance. Maya, about what you said earlier. Why can't you tell anyone you're able to channel spirits? Oh, that. You know how all the queens are also spirit mediums here? I heard. It was kind of a shock at first, though. In Koreanism, spirit channeling is a secret art that can only be performed by the queen. No one else is supposed to be able to do it. I see. So spirit channeling is a symbol of power or authority, then, in that sense. I can see why it would look bad if a nobody from another country were able to do it, too. Spirit channeling in the Korean tradition was developed from a Koreanist style that was brought to Japanifornia via Japanifornia. But it seems like my clan's spiritual power is greater than that of the average Koreanese. <clears throat> they never do. He respects, he respects lawyer-client privilege. It may be a quirk due to how our styles diverge, but I don't really know. So, if spirit channeling is a power possessed only by the queens of Karain, and it's a power... <sighs> and it's a power that somehow made its way down the line to Maya, then I guess that me makes Queen Garan and Princess Rafa distant relatives of Maya's. Anyway, it's not like there's some kind of rule about it. It's just, I'd rather not have it become an issue or anything. That's why mediums who come here to train hide the fact that they can channel spirits. I see. I had no idea it was so complicated. Either way, training here is a must to fulfill the qualification needed to become the master. And what is this qualification to become the master? To be able to channel spirits of one's own volition and without fail every time. Like, remember how my spirit channeling was always hit or miss? I only ever succeeded about 30% of the time. Yeah, and it was more like spirits possessed her as opposed to channeling them. So you can do it every single time now, whenever you want? Yep. At least, I think. You think? Well, I haven't actually tried channeling anyone since I completed my training here. But once I get back home, I plan on taking the final spirit medium test. I'll have to try channeling one spirit after another in a marathon channeling session. Only those who pass the test are worthy of becoming the master, huh? Yeah, but I know I can do it. I'm going to ace that test and become the next master. After all, I can't let my clan and the other villagers down. Right. Maya's the next big hope of Karain Village. That's got to be a lot of pressure. So speaking of similarities, we noticed another similarity between our countries besides spirit channeling. I saw, I saw a show on TV earlier that reminded me of the Steel Samurai. Oh, you must mean the Plumed Punisher, warrior of Neo Twilight Realm. Is this going to be relevant? Of course it is. So you've already seen the Plumed Punisher? You don't, you really don't miss a beat. Actually, it was her benevolence who told me all about it. There is not a single person in crying. Wait, was this supposed to be a flashback or are you here now? Oh, your benevolence, you're back. 
As the royal priestess, I am charged with monitoring your movements. So I have changed my mind, for in order to fulfill my duty, I must avert my ears. I must not avert my ears, not even from your blasphemous theories. Her sense of duty is commendable. But I wouldn't mind if she backed off a bit. Great timing, your benevolence. There's actually something I wanted to show off to the both of you. Show off? Maya sure seems excited all of a sudden. Yep. Ta-da! What's that? It's an ultra-rare plume furniture strap. There's only one of them in the whole world. It was specially made to promote the TV show. You're the owner of this strap? Don't tell me. You're a plumed Punisher fan too, your benevolence? No, of course not. Only little children watch that show. I have no interest in such things. I twitch, I twitch. Right. No, I am telling the truth. Sure, let's just leave it at that. So how did you get your hands on that, Maya? <laughs> I found a kindred spirit in a plumed Punisher fan here in Kurain. It resulted in an exchange of cultures transcending national borders. And by cultural exchange, you mean you, swatched, you swapped TV show promo merchandise? You bet. I traded my Steel Samurai watch for this strap. It's a super rare watch that plays the Steel Samurai theme song when the alarm goes off. My newfound Kurainese friend was so happy I got this one-of-a-kind strap in return. I guess there are people like that wherever you go, even here in Kar Kurain. Weebs. Watch this. When you play the Magatama on her belt, it plays the show's theme song. It sounds just like the Steel Samurai theme song. What are you talking about? Can't you hear the folk instruments in the intro and the exotic tones throughout? Plus, the Steel Samurai has Japanese taiko drums that go in the intro. Um, right. Guess my ears just aren't as good as yours. Anyway, I have this amazing idea for a new show. The Plumed Punisher versus the Steel Samurai. I'm going to totally go pitch it to some TV stations when I get back home. It's going to be a huge hit. Right, your benevolence? I have no interest in such things. Well, if nothing else, talking about the Plume Punisher has thankfully served to cheer Maya up a bit. It's getting late. Try to get some sleep, okay, Maya? And leave tomorrow to me. See, the taikos go da ka dan 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 The traditional instruments here go da ka dan 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 instead. And the key and the cheats on his keyboard like boop 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 Time to head back to the temple and go over everything I've learned so far. It's getting late. You can tell by how much day it is. Won't be long till sundown. Mr. Wright, your benevolence. I'll see you again. Are you done with your investigation for today? Pretty much. I thought I'd go over what I've learned so far. <laughs> Imperium Ave Imperium. <laughs> Care to join me? Yes, please allow me to help. Okay. First, we know that the High Priest received a warning three days ago. It was from someone claiming to be Lady Kira, and it told him not to perform the rite. That's right, it was that rebel hunter, but what of it? That's what I'm not sure of yet. Why would Lady Kira want to stop the rite? If you could solve that mystery... Right. I can figure out her motive for threatening the High Priest. It might be the break I need, but I just don't know enough right, right now to act on that lead. 
How unfortunate for you, barbed head. Your only hope is pure speculation. That shall not stand up in the Hall of Justice. You have no actual proof of Lady Kira's involvement with this crime, after all. Yeah, the warning letter alone can't prove who killed the High Priest. I'll give you one last chance to withdraw before you are charged under the DC Act. You're benevolent! While it is true you did not forge or suppress any evidence, that is perhaps a product of my careful monitoring of your every move. I wasn't planning on doing anything like that in the first place, your benevolence. But I am going to prove Maya's innocence, within the confines of the law. How can you be so sure you will? Because of my undying faith in my clients. That is a lawyer's greatest weapon. Hmm. What nonsense. You have chosen to dig your own grave. When next we meet, it shall be in the Hall of Justice. As royal priestess, it is my duty to reveal the truth through the, div the divination seance. This time, I will prove that the insights I glean thereof are the very truth itself. Prepare yourself, for this shall be your last trial and your last rites. Tomorrow shall end with you under the headsman's axe. Tomorrow, I'll be defending Maya in that so-called Hall of Justice again. That whole seance thing makes trials here completely different from those back home. Plus, I don't have a shred of conclusive evidence. On the other hand, I've got plenty of confusion and anxiety to spare. I'll have to think of something. After all, I'm not the only lawyer in all of Karain. I have to do this. I will do this. Wait, did he say I am or I'm not? After all, I'm the only lawyer in all of Karain. I'll prove my innocence if it's the last thing I do. All right, on to the trial. I wasn't able to find any conclusive evidence yesterday, but if I can figure out Lady Kira's motive for threatening the High Priest, then maybe. She's so tall. <laughs> used to, I'm used to Maya being down here. Nick, um, today I... well... Don't look so down, Maya. I'm going to defend you with everything I've got. You would do well to cease this ex insanity while you still can. I don't know why they keep... They keep doing question marks for somebody speaking off-stream... or er, off-stream. Off-screen, even when we know their voice. <laughs> As I said yesterday, I'm going to defend my client in court. Well, know this. You shall not witness a miracle of the sort that occurred last time. The moment she is found guilty, you too will be found guilty of abetting the accused. I never claim to be a miracle maker, but I am good at discovering the truth. And unlike miracles, the truth is always waiting to be found. The truth, you say. Hmm. Then it seems you have chosen your fate. This shall be... Your very last trial. Nick. I'm going to prove you innocent, Maya. You'll see. After all, you have to introduce the Plumed Punisher Warrior of Neo Twilight Realm to the folks back home, right? Right. I may be a defendant this time. But I'll be by your side like always, Nick. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, Maya. This place is tough on lawyers. I'll need all the help I can get. <laughs> she go grew tall because of all those hamburgers. Plus, it's always good to have you on the team. Well, it's time. Let's go.
Let the trial of my F.A. begin. The defense is ready, your majesty. Uh-oh. Your chair broke. That is not good. I would give you my chair, but you are far away. Huh? Um... Quiet! Can't you see Prosecutor Sadmati is absorbed in silent prayer? Great. The trial's barely started and the judge is already mad at me. He's very devout for a prosecutor. Hmm? Why is the accused standing over there? Oh, um, well... Your Majesty. Which I still hate so much. <laughs> in addition to being the accused, she is also my assistant. The accused is your assistant, you say? Yeah, hydraulics to adjust the height cover broke. I I actually have a new chair in pieces behind me. <laughs> I got it for Christmas and it didn't have the um it didn't come with screws. They didn't um include them. So I had to call Home Depot. And they were like, okay, we we can send you we can send you a screw pack, but they're on, like, back order, so it, it might be weeks. I'm like, eh, okay. Very well, then. A criminal does indeed make a fitting partner to a lawyer with a defiled soul. <laughs> You're the best, Maya. That wasn't very nice. Yeah, well, bad-mouthing lawyers seems to be a custom of sorts here in Kurayan. I must say, I am surprised to see you still here in Kurain, Mr. Wright. And even more so, to find you in the Hall of Justice once more. I cannot fathom why you would willingly risk your life in yet another trial. The answer is simple, Your Majesty. I am a lawyer, and this is what lawyers do. Although, to be frank, I'd rather be anywhere but here right now. Such foolishness. Ah, Prosecutor Sadmari, are you ready to begin now? Yes, Your Majesty. The prosecution is ready. Let us begin without further delay. But first, I promise you both this. I will cast your wicked souls into the fires of hell. Thus shall the soul of the victim attain salvation. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Splendid. I would expect nothing less of you, Prosecutor Sadmari. Whole new PC? I would send you my PC. But you're so far away, and this... It, it would... I, that, that would mean that I would have to build another one. That would be the worst. It would be the actual worst. What did the crowd say? Please save the victim's soul, punish the wicked lawyer who dares to stop these last rates. I think I'll pass on that whole fire and brimstone deal. But I'm not surprised by your words or stance, considering what Apollo's told me about you. <laughs> so it was you who installed that putrid lawyerly guile within him. Putrid what? He, too, must soon face the fires, lest his soul be lost to redemption. But I shall send you on ahead, so that he will not be lonely when he arrives. Sorry, but I'm afraid it won't be that easy. People say I never know when to give up. Nervous, Maya? A little. Feels like it's been ages since we stood side by side like this in court. Too bad I'm the defendant. Don't worry. We haven't lost a case together yet. You're right. Let's give this everything we've got, Nick. Now then, Prosecutor Sadmari, would you please explain the case at hand? Of course, Your Majesty. Let us begin the last rites of the victim. Maya Fey has been charged with the crime of murder. The victim of her heinous crime was High Priestess Trusting Me. He was conducting the purification rites when he was brutally slain. <laughs> she should be used to it. It has been it has been like seven or eight years though. 
during which time she has practiced no law, making her the ideal assistant. And the cause of death? Let us review the victim's autopsy report and the crime scene photo, shall we? The cause of death was blood loss from a stab wound delivered to the abdomen. The murder weapon was most likely the Warbad dagger, which was used in the right. However, the weapon has yet to be found, though the scene was thoroughly searched. She needs a case every month. A sacred relic used as a tool of murder. The Holy Mother's wrath shall be most severe. The murder itself took place at the height of the purification rite. The accused had donned Lady Kira's sacred robes, and the victim was there to offer prayers as a high priest of Kurainism. During the rite, the victim and accused were the only two in the inner sanctum. Therefore, the only person who could have slain the victim is Maya Fey. Hmm. I must say, that does cast a great deal of suspicion upon the accused. Indeed. Now then, allow me to submit this diagram of the crime scene as evidence in this case. In Quranism, slaying a priest is a most is a sin most grave and dreadful. As such, Maya Fey's soul shall be plunged into the lowest level of hell, the hell of tickling. The Jigoku no Jigoku no Kusuguri. There she shall be tickled without end for five hundred million years. That is a terrible fate indeed. Would the defense care to respond? And here I thought the lower of hell was the hell of back pain. I don't remember killing anyone and I don't have that dagger or anything like it. As my client stated, she has no memory of the event as described by the prosecution. But more importantly, she had no motive to kill the high priest in the first place. Hmm. I thought you might say that. Nevertheless, the meaningless prattle of lawyers is utterly ineffectual here in the Hall of Justice. For all will be made clear by her benevolence, Rafa Padma Kurain's insights. So it is, and so it shall be. The divination seance reveals the truth for all to see. Here we go again. Bailiff, please show in the royal priestess. So we're starting with the, um... Or wait, is she going to do the right, or are we just going to talk to her? It's Princess Rafa. Oh, how beautiful her benevolence looks again today. Glory to the Holy Mother for this blessed day. As popular as ever, I see. Rest assured, good people of Kurain, I will defeat this murderer and her a better. They shall not escape on their Freedom Express today. What a joy it is to have the Royal Priestess back in the Hall of Justice. I isn't she here for every court case? <laughs> May the Holy Mother grant us her divine favor. Urdihara Kurain. She sure looks pleased with herself. Also, they were saying Kurain instead of Kurain but I'm going to keep saying it my way. Especially for someone who didn't know what a Freedom Express was until yesterday. Hmm. <laughs> Is there something stuck to my face, barbed head? No. Nothing, Your Benevolence, except for the face paint. That counts. Now then, Your Benevolence, the divi divination seance, if you please. Very well. Nana, my robe. Holy Mother, we hold this divination seance in your name. 
Let the eyes of everyone here be clear and our ears be unstopped. O oh, dance of devotion, guide the victim's soul to me so that we may receive their final memories in the pool of souls. I was gonna say they are gonna have us watch the dance again. <laughs> They're proud of it. Although maybe one of these times, it won't be this time. A little bit, yeah, a little like a near song. I wonder if one of these times, and it wouldn't be this time because it, it's got to be the third time. You got to have it happen normally twice. If like the third time something will happen during the dance. Somebody will, somebody will, I don't know, run and stab, well, no, that's too violent. She'll just go unconscious. <laughs> I don't think somebody will kill her during the dance. But I think maybe something might happen. Like, it'll, it'll be interrupted by someone running in? I don't know. Or the dance will fail, or something. Incense, footsteps, pain. Well, that was short and very incriminating. <laughs> the victim's mitma has spoken. The divination seance is complete. Great. Another clearly incriminating seance vision. It could not be any clearer, O oh foul defense. The accused donned the sacred robes of Lady Kira, and then attacked the victim. I guess she won't even get redeemed, maybe? Well, I'm, I'm curious as to what will happen with her parents. Will, will one or both of them be found guilty? Will, will the dad... I mean, the dad is so, like, obviously super evil, he's probably the final killer. Maybe. <laughs> She's on the cover, yeah. Oh, how very terrible it must have been. The figure of Lady Kira lit against the dim lantern light. The scent of incense growing ever more potent as she drew near. One can almost sense the horror Abbot in me must have felt. The facts as pre presented by her benevolence are indisputable. B -b but that wasn't me. Do something, Nick. I'm working on it. It couldn't have been any clearer. Looks like I'm in for another uphill battle. The accused committed this vile act during our ancient tradition, the purification rite. Come to think of it, the rite's guide explains the multi-part purification rite in detail. The Transformation Rite. The High Priest reads scripture while a priestess dons the robes of Lady Kira. The Rite of Water. Lady Kira enters the spring, and the High Priest purifies her along with the dagger. The Rite of Fire. Remember, you gotta keep the full moon on the, on the west. That's why there's a compass. 
The priestess circles the inner flames to purify her soul. Indeed. <coughs> it would seem that the murder occurred during the transformation rite. The rite dictates that the high priest stand in front of the spring. Therefore, the accused must have attacked him from the direction of the broken lantern. Well, barbed head, would you care to object? Of course, because I know my client is innocent. <laughs> so you say. You truly do not know when you are beaten, do you? I managed to pull it off last time with Albi. I'll just have to do it again. You intend to find fault with her benevolence's insights yet again? It would seem lawyers are Pukunkan creatures indeed. Look at that Pukunkan. 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 What exactly is a Pukunkan? <laughs> Someone who's a real piece of work, so to speak. A piece of artwork, like a Funyarimpa? They can call me anything they want. The only thing I care about is uncovering the truth. So, Barbed Head, are you foolish enough to risk your life for your so-called truth? Because my insights are the truth. To deny them is to willingly dig your own grave. <laughs> the victim commenced the purification rite by bowing to the lanterns and reading a sutra. As the first part, the transformation rite ended, he lowered the sutra. Suddenly, he heard the accused approaching footsteps and smelled her incense-laden robes. It was then that the victim felt an intense pain. I believe this is when he was stabbed. As his life's blood spilled over, his vision dimmed till finally he passed from our world. That is everything the victim experienced in his final moments. Dressed in the sacred robes of Lady Kira, the accused rushed the victim head on. The brutal stabbing she perpetrated could not have been any clearer. <sighs> yes, it is plain for all to see. No, it wasn't me. A sudden drowsiness came over me during the transformation rite. I didn't even get a chance to put on Lady Kira's robes. You waste our time with such meaningless ac statements, accused. You cannot explain away the truth revealed by th of the royal priestess's divine insight. Ooh. How did you end up finding contradictions last time? The deceased's final memories include all five senses. Oh, you mean those words that appeared in the Pool of Souls? It looked to me like... The bigger the word, the stronger the sensation was to the victim. Yeah, that's how it looked to me, too. The sensations themselves are never wrong, only their interpretations. That's why I tried to point out mistakes in Rafa's insights last time. So, there could be contradictions between what Abbot in me felt and her insights, huh? You got it. And I'm going to find them this time, too. Should I check how to point out contradictions? Okay. Even though I actually did forget, I'll figure it out. Sensations this time seem to fluctuate more than the ones from Albi's case. In which case, I better keep an eye on their changes in intensity, too. Okay. Hang on, I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit. really cold here. All right, back to the beginning. Turns to that lantern, which is lit, and bows. Turns to that one, which is lit, and bows. That one is still lit. There's wind. And 
Vincent's footsteps pain. Commence the purification rite by bound to the lantern turns and reading a sutra. As the, the first part of the transformation rite ended, he lowered the sutra. Suddenly, he heard the accused approach, approaching footsteps. Oh, approaching footsteps. Are the footsteps not getting louder? Footsteps are not getting louder. Objection! The victim supposedly heard the accused approaching footsteps. But did he really? What nonsense is this? Is it not abundantly clear? So good at detectivizing. I mean, they they took great care to... Even when I skipped the tutorial, he's like, Well, even so, I have to remember that this, the changes in intensity are really important. No, it's not. Because there is something strange about those footsteps. Strange. Explain yourself, barbed head. The footsteps are strange because... They don't get louder. They're not getting any louder. And why exactly does that matter? Please, focus your attention on the incense the victim smelled. The scent grows stronger as the accused approaches. If the accused really had approached the victim, the sound of her footsteps would have grown louder as the scent of incense grew stronger. Wind! Why, that makes perfect sense. How can this be explained, your benevolence? Um, well... There must be a reason. Objection. It is as they say, even a putrid worm of a lawyer will turn. What does that even mean? He's not exactly singing your praises, that's for sure. Still, we cannot discount this information solely on account of its lawyerly source. Your benevolence. Perhaps you must listen more carefully to the abbot's mitma. Listen more carefully? What's he talking about? Hmm. Yes. It would appear so. I shall try to refine the sensation. <laughs> refine the sensation? Y yes, I have the updated autopsy report right here in my pocket. I can more accurately gauge sensations by deepening my communication with a mitma. I didn't know you could do that. Why have we never done this before? By refining a sensation, a clearer picture of the truth can be discovered. Just don't do the whole dance again. I'm gonna skip it. Let's admit my beseech you, hear me now and respond to my call. Footsteps changed into bells? <laughs> what could this mean? Bells, but the only bells at the scene of the crime were. Ah, the jingling must have come from Abbot and Me's bells. You mean those big things he had on his on his ankles? Well, there you have it. The sound of bells was from the high priest's own footsteps. Then that means. If the footsteps belong to the victim himself, it means it was the victim who was moving, not the accused. The victim was the one who went running toward the broken lantern from the spring. A far cry from what her benevolence's insight would have us believe. <sighs> Ng. But why would the victim have approached the accused? Maybe he was trying to defend himself. Please explain. He could have felt threatened by Lady Kira standing there with a dagger, even though that is literally what he was supposed to see when he put down the sutra. 
She was supposed to change into the thing and hold the thing. If so, he might have thought to overpower her before she attacked. <laughs> it... It isn't this silly? <laughs> Still your voices. This is nothing but a theory, and a poor one at that. Be not led astray by this lawyer's obvious postulation. While his insolence is inexcusable, I would ask that you calm yourself, your benevolence. Is there something you would care to say, Prosecutor Sadmati? Even if it was Abbot Idmi who moved, it does not negate the accused's crime. What do you mean? The accused was likely waiting for the high priest to approach. Ah! And as he neared, she plunged the dagger into him. It is as simple as that. Oh, right. It really doesn't change much, does it? Yes, it is as the prosecu prosecutor has said. In fact, it is as I meant to say all along. Right, and that's why you were so shocked when you first heard it. Wasn't me, Governor. The lad ran into my dagger and stabbed himself 33 times. <laughs> it could happen. Understand now, lawyer, that contradiction you conjured up has come to naught. Once I hone my instinct, it will vanish like the dying rays of the sun. In fact, the fact that it was Abbot in me who moved changes nothing. Arg! Come on, Phoenix, you gotta keep your cool. That contradiction I pointed out must mean something. That one sensation changed after Princess Rafer refined her vision. It stands to reason that something else might have changed too because of the refinement. After all, this is a Phoenix Wright game. Focus on any sensations that have changed while searching for more contradictions between them and her insights. See, they have so many... The, the fact that they keep adding on mechanics means that they spend less time with each one, and it can't really be... Puzzles aren't as, as good when the, the... What do you call it? If the person making the game can't trust that you understand the underlying systems, then they can't challenge you with them. Like, if, if Baba, was, Baba is You was only four puzzles long, <laughs> like, you, you wouldn't be able to go anywhere. You wouldn't be able to get any complexity out of it because it takes more time than that to go, okay, I trust that you now really understand this. Now I can make variations to it. In the older games, you would have had, like, you know, you have Apollo's wrist truth-telling thing. You would use that multiple times every single every single chapter. Or, you know, Phoenix and the, the Magatama interrogations would happen multiple times each investigation. And it's like, uh, it's, not, it's not as much fun when they spread it out across so many different mechanics. So there's wind. Incense and bells. Yeah. The the dialogue uh, <laughs> I mean pretty much every any any visual novel style game I I tend to go like I wish this had less dialogue. Other other than like um I the Somnium files wasn't bad. Oh, oh, water. Okay, so hold on. Fight her off by the broken lantern is not correct if he heard water.
hold it. How do we know the purification rite was performed exactly as it was supposed to be? Hmm, that's easy. The customs governing the rite are very clear, and Adam, Adam, Abbot in me would have adhered to them. Well, that's strange. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain just what is so strange? Oh, did he? Okay. He was facing the one way, pulled up the sutra, turned around, and then uh, rushed towards her in the water. Yes, I would ask you to consider the sound of the victim's footsteps. The sound of bells changes to the sound of water at one point. What's this? It's simple. The victim must have stepped in some water. Oh? Yes. And the only source of water in the inner sanctum is the spring. And therein lies the contradiction. Actually, if I'm done with my water, let me get a soda. Let's get some caffeine. 